Well, hello, good people. Welcome to part two of Comfy UI 101. In today's video, we're going to set up our workflow with Laura's, install our first custom node package, and develop an image to image workflow very easily. Now, if you happen to be new to my channel and this is the first video you're watching, make sure to watch the previous video that I just posted. Link will be in the description below. Now, before we get started, I want you to bring up the workflow that we worked on in the previous video. Now, if you saved it properly, it should be in your workflow folder here. You can just click it to populate the workspace. Or if you saved it locally, you can just drag and drop it into the workspace. Next, we need some LoRa's obviously to work with. You can choose whichever LoRa's you want. I'm going to use these two particular ones. This one is Juggernaut Cinematic XL. It's a kind of old one, but I like it because it gives you a nice cinematic look. Go ahead and download this. And I also want you to pay attention to what's known as trigger words. Leave this tab open so we can go back to it. And basically you can use these to trigger the Laura for a certain style. In this case, we've got cinematic, cinematic shot, cinematic lighting. There's quite a few you can use. You don't have to use them all. And then the other one I'm using in this video is called Mid Journey Mimic. And just like the title, it mimics that Mid Journey look, if that's something you're into. I think this one is based on Mid Journey 5.2. And for your LoRa's, similar to your checkpoints, you want to go into your main ComfyUI folder, wherever that's located. Under Models, you'll find a folder for LoRa's. You want to download them here. Next, I want you to go into the Manager and then select Custom Nodes Manager. And I want you to search for RG3. You see this one here, RG3's ComfyUI nodes. This is widely used by many users. There's so many useful nodes that we're going to use in future videos. So go ahead and click the checkbox here. Simply click install. And if I move my big head here, you see that to apply this change, we need to restart ComfyUI. So I'm going to go ahead and restart it. Now just note sometimes when you do that, for whatever reason that change doesn't happen, you might be better off just shutting down ComfyUI completely and restarting. So let's go ahead in our workspace here and right click, add node. Now if you remember from the previous video, anything we want to load will be under the loaders submenu here. So let's click on that and under this submenu you see load LoRa. So let's click on that. Here it is. I'm going to give it the same blue color just so everything matches. There we go. Now let's make some space. We're just going to move that over and bring this up here. Now, if you recall, a lot of the inputs are color coded. So you see model to model, clip to clip. So we want to connect these two together here, clip to clip. And then we want to put our clip to clip here and as well from the negative prompt. And if you notice the previous connections on our clip are no longer there because they've been replaced. So now we have to put this model input into the K sampler to replace this one. We're just going to connect it like that. And again, because I like to keep things neat and tidy, I'm just going to create a reroute node there, bring it down a bit just to keep things nice and tidy. Now, if you've never used a LoRa before, basically what it is, it's an additional data set of images that gets applied to a base model like SDXL or even a fine-tuned model and it'll further enhance the style of the model in a specific way that it's been trained. In this case, the one we downloaded, the Juggernaut Cinematic one, is trained on that cinematic look. Now we have two options here. We have the strength of the LoRa and the strength of the clip. Now if we go back to the LoRa page, Sometimes it'll give you the suggested strength, either here or somewhere in the notes. Now I don't see off the bat if there's a suggested strength. So it's always good then to start with one and then adjust it as you go. The other thing you might want to do is click on the images. And then on the right here, not only will you see the prompt and the negative prompts, 
but you'll also see the metadata here. So you see guidance of seven, steps at 35, sampler DPM++ 2SA. And if you sift through all these images, you see that most of the same settings are used. So that gives us a good starting point. You can use other settings, you can use other samplers, but it's always good to look at the images to find decent settings to start with. So for now, I'm going to leave the strength at one and the strength clip at one. The strength model is how much of the effect you want the LoRa to have on the final image. And strength clip has to do with the influence of the prompt. But let's just give it a shot. So one of the trigger words was cinematic. And I'm going to put cinematic film still of Jon Snow from... Game of Thrones. Capitalization doesn't matter. And is it John with an H? I don't remember. Whatever. Let's put him sitting on a throne made of swords. I can't spell. Inside a castle. Moody candle light. And let's put wearing Daedric armor. Little Skyrim nod. <laughs> and muted colors. I think that's good enough. So let's do a couple things. I believe it was DPM++ 2S Ancestral that was recommended. Actually, it was 35 steps, right? And then seven. And let's do like a 69 type of shot here and do 1280 by 720. We'll go ahead and generate that. And then after I'm going to use the same seed without using the LoRa. We can do a little side by side comparison. All right, here's the image. Let me just pop it open here. Not the greatest. I mean, it could use some work, but you could definitely see it's got sort of that cinematic look. Now, if we want to generate the image with just Juggernaut without the LoRa, we could right click here and select Bypass. You see that uh, it'll be faded out. And let's go ahead and generate it without the LoRa and do a comparison. Oh, and by the way, I did change this to fixed so that we use the same seed. That way we can do a better comparison. So if we take a look at them side by side, this is just the Juggernaut model, and this is the one with the LoRa. Notice the composition is much tighter with the LoRa. You'll find that's very common with this particular LoRa. It tends to really crop tightly on the subjects. And just for fun, let's re-enable this. And I want to try the mid-journey one. And I believe the strength was 0.8. Let's go ahead and generate the same seed. So here's the one using mid-journey. Looks a lot like Juggernaut, just aesthetically. It's got a little bit more of a realistic vibe. Not too sure if you could tell the differences, but very slight differences. Here's the mid-journey Laura, and here's Juggernaut without it. And I'll also show you on the full screen what they look like. Now, what if you wanted to use multiple LoRa's? There are LoRa's out there that improve details like skin texture, hands, that type of thing. And if we look at the LoRa node, there's only one area here where we can load a LoRa. Earlier, the custom node that we installed, RG3, has some custom nodes that we can use. Let's go ahead and right click, click on add node, now you see that we have an option RG3. Let's click on that. And there's a whole bunch of custom nodes here that we can use. The one we're looking for is near the bottom called Power LoRa Loader. Let's click on that. And we want to get rid of this one. So let's just delete that. And then we want to do our connections. Same thing, color coordinated, model to model, clip to clip. And then we want to do the same over here and connect this model input to the case sampler. We'll give it a color. This time I'll use pale blue. And the great thing about this is that when we add our LoRa, so we're gonna go ahead and add Juggernaut. Now we don't have to bypass it if we don't wanna use it. We can just toggle it off with the switch. And even if we wanted to, we can maybe put this at 0.5 and add the mid journey style one, put that at 0.5. So we could basically stack as many LoRa's as we want. And then when we're not using it, we could just toggle them off. This is a very useful note. 
All right, let's move on to image to image. And really it's not that difficult, but what I want you to do first is let's create a group. Okay. We're going to keep this basic workflow on the workspace. Go ahead and just hold control, drag and select everything. And then anywhere on the workspace, right click and select add group for selected nodes. And it's going to create this nice little background for us. We can adjust it a little bit here with the corner. And we can move the nodes around if we wanted to. And then we're going to rename this SDXL generation. You could call it whatever you want. And then right about here near the bottom, let's go ahead and right click, add node, select RG3. You want to look for this one, Fast Groups Bypasser. This is going to be a nice little toggle switch for us to enable or disable workflows that we have on the workspace. Okay. So if I switch this off, you see everything is now bypassed. So leave it on for now. And then what we're going to do is once again, hit control and select everything. Select the header part of this as well while holding control so that we choose everything. We're going to hit control C to copy and then anywhere here let's click on this area hit control v to paste and then just grab this here now it's up to you if you want to change the color of the background i'm going to go ahead and do that you can right click and click on edit group and then you'll see an option for colors let's make this more of a cyan there we go and then we're going to call this sdxl image to image We'll move it down a little bit. Now you see our bypasser switch has two groups, so we can toggle between one or the other. Nice and handy to keep both workflows, right? Okay, so for image to image, we actually don't have to change all that much really. Now, mind you, this is a very simple workflow, okay? So let's zoom in here and we're gonna right click once again add node. This time we're going to look for image. Click on that. And in this sub menu here, we see load image. Let's click on that. And we're going to get this load image node here. And then we want to right click again, add node. And under latent, we want to look for VAE encode. Okay. Now this is different from VAE decode because we already have an image we're going to work with. We no longer need this empty latent image. So let's go ahead and delete this and we're going to replace it. Let's first connect the latent input to the latent input here on the sampler. Let's bring this over here. And you'll notice the image input is the same blue color as pixels. We're going to connect that. And then we have to connect the VAE to the load checkpoint here, right? So let's connect that. And let's stay with the Game of Thrones image here. Let's click on Q. We're going to bring in, let's bring in the juggernaut one we did. We can just slide it into this area here and it's going to populate this area. Or you can click on this and upload it from any of your folders locally. Now we're not going to use the LoRa in this case, so we'll toggle it off. But the only thing we have to really change now is the denoising strength. So the way denoising works is the lowered is, let's say 0.3, the image is only going to change a little bit, small details. But if we do it at like, let's say 0.75, it's going to have more creative freedom and it'll change the image quite a bit. So let's go ahead and generate this and we'll click Q. Oh, before, <laughs> before you generate, make sure to toggle this off. Otherwise you're going to generate another image on this workflow. So we'll go ahead and generate now. So off the bat, you see that uh, here, there's some candle stands here. There's not the amount of candles differ. The armor is slightly different. So there's quite a few differences between the two. And if I toggle between the two here, you see those differences are a bit more evident. Obviously, if we put the denoising strength higher to like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, it's going to be a lot more different. As always, go ahead and save our workflow. We'll do save as, and we're going to do text to image, image to image. We'll add that, click confirm. I also like to save them locally just in case. So now you've learned how to install LoRa's. We installed our very first custom node package, and we also did a very simple image to image workflow. 
Now in the next video, I think what we'll do is we'll take what we've known, but we'll do workflows based on Flux. Because with Flux, it's a little more complicated but learning these basics will make it a little bit easier to transition from SDXL to Flux. Now for some reason, if you haven't watched the first video, make sure to check it out right here. And until that next video, I'll see you when I see you.